Well, I'm really excited to be able to make this video for you. Uh, we're going to go through an insulation blowing machine, uh, what the parts are, how to test them, how to make sure that it's working optimally. This is a relatively old machine and it's not considered a very powerful machine. Uh, but this is, I'd say, probably on par with what you might find uh, in kind of the Home Depots and things like that. Now this is one of the simplest machines and uh, this blue part is known as the hopper and that's going to contain the bulk insulation and then all the mechanicals of it are down here. The point is that it's going to take a uh, really dense packaged product of insulation like this and it's going to break it apart into little pieces and then blow all these little pieces through the hose under air pressure to get it to where you need to go. Here's the controls. Now this is a this says a single 15 amp but if you read the manual it will quite often wind up tripping a circuit breaker if it's on a 15 amp breaker only. The manual says to hook this up to a 20 amp. This is the remote on off switch that the operator will be using. Plastic hopper. Now inside the hopper, now this agitator arm is going to spin. It's going to break apart the insulation and it's going to push it into this lower chamber called the airlock. Now that is where you need the insulation to go. If this is wide open and all that insulation is falling down there, you can quite often wind up clogging the hose or clogging the airlock. That's just going to slow you down. You're going to need to take it apart and clean it. So in order to prevent that from clogging up, you're going to close off some of that. And you use a plate like this. This is called the feed gate. Put it in the slot. And as you push this in, it's going to close off that opening and restrict the amount of insulation that can fall down. There might be situations when you want to open this feed gate all the way instead of closing it. That would be usually just in an open blow. But this particular machine you really want to be careful with ever opening it all the way. Uh, you're probably going to want to keep this closed down. If you're dense packing, you're going to want this closed down quite a long ways. So it might be something like that, a relatively small opening. Under the feed gate is the port. That's where your hose is going to hook up to and your insulation is actually going to come out from here. We can look inside. So this big motor is turning a shaft, running a gearbox. Inside the gearbox, it's going to split. It's going to be turning the air lock and it's going to turn the agitator inside that big propeller looking thing. So this blower is going to suck air in here and you can actually see that turn but that's going to suck air in this opening and then blow it. The air is going to come in here into the airlock and then it's going to blow out the port right here. Now inside this airlock are six rotating fins so let's go back and look at that. This airlock has six paddles. Each paddle then has a silicone flapper on it. Now as this turns, it makes a seal with the walls. And the point is that when it's doing this, it's gonna seal off the bottommost chamber. That bottommost chamber is where the air pressure is located. You don't want the air pressure coming up into this hopper. You want all the air pressure diverted out this port and down the hose. Now these fins, which are made of silicone in this case, sometimes they're rubber, these are in very good shape. You can feel the edge. Now if this is a rental machine and it's not maintained well, uh, you'll find that these have a lot of tears in them or maybe they're not firmly seated. If they were installed slightly canted, uh, and little bits of, say, a little a nail that gets dropped in here, or a string that might get wound 
around this will wind up tearing and cutting these fins. Before you plug it in, you want to make sure that everything is in the off position. We'll go ahead and turn on the machine. And then we can control everything just with this remote, which is on the wire. Now we're going to turn on the agitator. And let me get the feed gate out of the way for you. You can see this big agitator, this propeller looking thing turns. That's going to push the cellulose to the airlock. All right, we're going to turn on the blower. All right, now we're going to turn on both at the same time. Now the most important part to getting a good dense pack is air pressure. Now that air pressure is going to be a combination of two things. One, the seals of that airlock, how well it's going to trap the air and force it out of this port. Second is going to be the blower itself. So you can test both things because all you care about is how much pressure you have coming out of this. So I took this uh, very simple, uh, we have a rubber coupling, then a reducer, another reducer, and an air pressure gauge. Now this one goes up to 15 PSI. What you're looking for is a bare minimum of 2.8 PSI in order to do a dense pack. If it has anything less than 2.8 PSI, or pounds per square inch. Now if you have anything less than that, there's no hope in getting a proper dense pack. And what I mean by a proper dense pack, the insulation has to be self-supporting inside the cavity so it won't fall and settle. This machine, factory new, is supposed to put out three PSI. Now other machines you can get five PSI or more out of brand new. And they're much better suited for dense packing. So let's go ahead and put this on and see what pressure we get. 2.3. Well, at 2.3 PSI, this is not powerful enough to do a dense pack. Well, there's the parts to the machine. I hope this was helpful. And in part two of this, I'm going to actually put some cellulose in this machine and we're going to talk about uh, techniques and hoses. Uh, to use for different cavities. Alright, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.